Let's head for the shade of those rocks. Seventy-five days in the saddle. Seventy-six. Thought I'd gotten away from cotton. Mile fields full of it. Reckon we've been riding about seven hours since sunup. You reckon about seven? Yeah. You know what'd be welcome? A little fresh water. Ain't this lonesome territory got any water at all? See the top of that ridge over there? From the top of that ridge, you can see the valley with all the shade you want and clean, cool water. Nurse made you all through the war, cooking your dinners, grooming your horse, ducking shot and shell, same as you. Captain, however, let you sweet talk me to come into this here Texas, I'll never know. <laughs> south of the new west. Dandy odds. Three against one. Well, you come across the border to steal cattle, eh? How many more you mescalate around in these hills? You Indians like to steal everything, don't you? Well, we're going to teach you a lesson that you don't steal cattle or anything from Mr. Kirk. What are they going to do to him? Looks like they're going to drag him. They're going to kill that poor devil. What are those idiots doing? They're trying to put Indians on the war path? Well, that's what we come all the way out of here. Get away from them. Finishes that damn Escalero. Let's ride out of here. What's all that mean? Show me his friend. Don't look all that friendly to me. He's one tough Indian. Hope his friends ain't in the neighborhood and think we did the dragon. You were out here last year. You know all that lingo. What did that signal mean? You got me. Probably means next time we meet him, he'll kill us. Oh.
Howdy, strangers. What can I do for you? Well, a little bit of everything. Well, except the variant. Oh, horses. Equine department. Be with you as soon as I get dressed proper. This gentleman is my business hat. CC Detweiler at your service. Pleasure. We've got us eight trail weary animals here. A pair of two legal ones. So I see. How far you come? I want to get them all fed. Oats and bran, whatever it takes. Check the shoes all around. I'm, I'm losing this one right here. Well, it's two bits a head for feed. Four bits to inspect the horse's shoes. A dollar to inspect the pack animals. A dollar? That's twice as much. Pack animals can kick you twice as far as them saddle horses. Well, that makes sense. Mr. Bidweiler charges by the foot. <laughs> I want to try to ride out about sunset. You're not too impressed with our town, eh, boys? Well, give us about a year. Where are you heading? We're heading down along the San Pedro. That's quite a bite, mister. Mr. Didweiler, where's the land off? Back of the bank here. Can't miss it. And uh, how about the best grub? Well, there's not much choice. Kirk's Hotel. And, um, well, um, where's the place a fella can pass the time? <laughs> you mean for two growing boys, eh? Yeah. Well, I tell you, fellas, there's God playing and there's Lady playing, if you get my drift. Over there, Roundhouse Jenny's behind those buildings, about a quarter of a mile. Really round. Can't miss it. Hard to miss Jenny, too. She's a very broad-minded lady, gents. Uh, she don't bar uh, coloreds, uh, mixes, or nobody, except Indians, of course. That's it. Well, now, look, you fellas go on into town and have some fun. Don't worry about a thing. We're real professionals. So's my staff. Wranglers, come on, go over there and take care of those pack animals. Come on, fellas, let's get to it. Come on, Pedro. I'll pay you later, CC. Add an extra 10 cents on the bill for licorice for your wranglers. Anything I can do for you, Doc? No, thank you, sir. I'm all ready to go. <laughs> like I said, Doc, this is a hell of a fancy rig just to be pulling bullets out of folks. I would like to think I could offer a bit more help than that. Where there is a love of men, there's also a love of the arts, the art of medicine. Well, I'll take your word for it. Tell me, Doc, uh, how does a man of your caliber wind up here? I left my homeland Germany to find a new life in a new country. Well, you take my advice, Doc. You specialize in bullet wounds and babies, and you make a fortune in Texas. <laughs> Howdy, CC. Dr. Hedrick? Mr. Kirk told me to tell you that he'll meet up with you back at the ranch. Now, take this here road out of town until you get to the fork. Take the ride till you get to the big house. You can't miss it. Thank you, sir. Well, so long, Doc. If you ever need anything, when I come back here, I'll be waiting for you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Hey, Carl. Mr. Kirk sick? Hell no. And wipe that smile off your face. You never get sick. The doc's for the girl. So now I know. What? Come on, Price, sit down. Sit down? Yeah. <laughs> Law says I can sit down. Oh, oh real food. Oh. 
matter? You gotta help me. I can read reading, but I can't read writing. Oh, you see this right here? S T. Stay. You won't have to go no further. <laughs> times change. You know times change. Oh, 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 don't say just. Folks bringing me dinner. Me sitting here with you. I remember it was about five years ago. You was about ready to work sixteen thousand acres. Now you barely got a toehold on the section. Well, maybe we're both better off, Pride. Howdy, Mr. Quill. I'm Andy Eames. Welcome to the territory. Howdy. Reckon you must have heard the name of Alexander Kirk. Oh, I've seen it. I've uh, heard it all over town. Yeah, well, he's our most prominent citizen. And a landowner and cattleman. Now, he likes to welcome any newcomers to the Gap. Well, that's uh, mighty friendly. Mr. Kirk's waiting for you in his office right now. I reckon you must have noticed this is Mr. Kirk's hotel. We don't talk so good on the empty belly. I wasn't talking to you, boy. Listen, well, I don't think you understand. Mr. Kirk wants to see you right now. Not after you had the dinner. Whoa, I, I, I wouldn't slap leather just quite so quick if I was you, Mr. Uh... Ames. Ames. You see, my partner has uh, already beat you to the draw. And he's got it pointed right about there where your body's touching the table. All right. We'll do it your way. This time. You did that mighty smooth. Had a mighty smooth teacher. Bryce, how you figure that man knew my name? I don't know. I do know he was one of them three guys. Kirk said uh, for you to go on ahead and make yourself a home. Uh, he'll be by uh, later. We'll take care of your team. Thank you, sir. Jackson? That's right. All the way from the Deep South. Well, a trip like that will give a man a real thirst. Help yourself, Mr. Quell. Well, I don't know, uh, Price. What do you think? You got room for a beer after all that food? Well, with somebody else buying, you bet. It's my ramrod, Ames. Oh, yes, sir. We met. Yeah, so I heard. Put him in kind of a bad mood. Sit down, Mr. Quell. Now, sir, how would you like to start off halfway up the ladder with me right now, instead of trying to scratch a livelihood out of some barren land? The land agent. Shoot a guess. That old boy must have a mighty fast tongue. Well, I do make it a point to try to get a line on any stranger that comes through these parts. Mr. Quill, that's miserable land. 
That is dangerous country. The Apache are always coming up from Chihuahua. And then the damn Mexes slip through and they'll steal you blind. Even Matt Fitzgerald, a very sensible man, he couldn't make a go of it. Well, prize and me, we figure we can handle it. Well, you are not the first dreamer that filed down there. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. Former officer like you, I'll start you off at Ramrod. At $75 a month. And I'll throw in a brand new saddle. Now, is that a deal? Well, Mr. Kirk, prize and me, we filed for our own land and we plan to make it work. I've got an obligation to my partner. Well, you sure are one funny kind of southern gentleman. All right. I'll find something for him to do. Did you ever work inside your master's home, like uh, serving or cooking? Hey, that's a good idea. Kirk's Hotel with its own darky, all dressed up fancy. <laughs> You offered me a job? I'll give you $25 a month and food, plus tips. Well, I just might be interested. Yes, sir, I just might. If you can see your way clear to set me up in business. Uh, a livery stable, say. One in town's the only one without the name Quake on it. You run a business. Oh, yes, sir. I know horses better than you know the inside of your head. Kirk's Hotel needs a barkey. I've got no use for some uppity nigra asking to be my partner. Thanks for the beer. Come on, prize. I'm trying to do you a favor. That San Pedro land is no place for a little homesteader. A lot of cows graze up there. Me, my double K brand. I've got 1,200 head now. It's going to be 1,500 before long and double that next year. Well, you set a mighty good example for us little homesteaders. Well, I've also got me 50 of the toughest cowboys this side of Laredo. Mister, they've been known to kill a man for just one little calf. Now, how many men do you figure you're going to have? During the war between the states, mister, I learned it didn't always matter who had the most men. Quite often, it was the fewest men whose battle flag was still flying after the smoke cleared. It's usually because they believed in something. Well, around here, it's my flag that folks respect. Thanks for the beer and the hospitality. Mr. Quell, have you ever seen a real stampede yet? It sort of reminds me of General Sherman marching through Georgia. Yeah, boy. <laughs> you suppose Jenny can be as good as that steak? Or just as satisfying? I see west of New Orleans. Hell, after 10 weeks on that trail, any place will look fancy. Come on, I'm fine. Well, come on in. Jenny is always open. Yeah, yeah. New cards for the deck. House rules. No offense, boys. That's three. <laughs> All working for Kirk. Stay handsome, we all come. Oh, judging by your draw, little lady, it sounds like we just might be from the same neighborhood. Mississippi? That's right. You stand tall like an army man. What else? Cavalry, third Mississippi regulars. Do you know Jimmy Staley, Major Jimmy Staley? Do I know Jimmy Staley? We rode side by side for three years. I reckon I know the man. Oh, good Lord Almighty. Honey, you and I are going up to my private parlor, and we're going to have a good old sun. 
mouth in bourbon, and, you know, rest later on Nancy. Uh, do take care of this gentleman of color, because I'm going to be tied up for a long, good while. Welcome to Jenny's, soldier. <laughs> So, uh, do you see anything you like? Yeah, but I ain't seen enough yet. Well, I'll tell you what. You buy me a beer, and you can look all you want. Mm -hmm. weren't allowed in the same room with the white man, except to shine his shoes. You're gonna have a choice, senor. Come on. Which one of us do you want? Uh-uh. He's all mine. That's what you think. Fighting you. <laughs> Get back at the table. Come on. Come on, brother. Get a chance to get my money back. <laughs> Don't mind, Carl. He doesn't mean anything. But I sure hope I do. You know, I sure hope you and your uh, friend will drop in more often. Say, what did you say your name was? Enterprise Jackson. Named after two big cities. But my friends call me Prize. Oh, yeah? My Prize. I like that. That's a very good idea. what's going on up here.
Pardon me. Yourselves quite a time. Right now, Danny. Yeah, yeah, just Danny. Will that cover it? <laughs> hey, CC, thanks for taking care of my horse and for the carriage. I want to thank you for what you did back then. Uh, I do not like unfair odds, and I have no use for those lice who always works for the mighty Alexander Kirk. You got a handle? I'm Paco. Paco Romero. Enterprise Jackson. I'm Jonathan Quell. You're uh, Mexican, ain't you? That I am. Something tells me, amigo, that neither you nor I can ever pretend to be gringo. <laughs> Any of them Kirk fellas ask me, I'll tell them you went that away. Gracias, amigo. Good luck, fellas. They're going to need all they can get. You muchachos are traveling very far because uh, those cur cowboys have a long memory. Not too far. That old Fitzgerald place. I know that well. If you and your friends here are going to fix up that old place, uh, maybe a damn fool Mexican might come in handy, huh? Well, maybe a damn fool Mexican might just come in handy at that. You look like a dude with money. What business are you in? Oh, I got a little business in Mexico. I got little business in Juarez. A little business around here. But somehow, amigo, everywhere I got business, I always got trouble too. Oh? How come? I ask myself that same question all the time. 
The only thing I can figure out is mixed up in the middle of all this business and all the troubles. It is always somehow a pretty senoritas. <laughs> well, me and Prize, we decided we're going to stick it out down here on the San Pedro. I mean, come good grass or bad, come dust or a downpour. Bueno, I would like to stick it out with men like you. And San Pedro Creek is a region I know like the back of my hand. I used the old Mescalero crossing all my life, into Mexico, back into the States. Why you want to trade in those fancy duds for the sweater homestead? Amigo, in my old age, I ought to settle down. <laughs> well, with those Kirk cowboys and the look of that well-worn pistol, looks like we just voted you in, Paco. But we don't have to rush into anything. Why don't we just try it for a while and see how we all like it? That is exactly what all my pretty muchachas tell me, too. <laughs> Welcome to the Double K, Dr. Hedrick. Your health, sir. Oh, don't wish that on too many folks. You'll be out of business. <laughs> oh, excellent wine, Mr. Kirk. It is German, isn't it? By God, there are some people that can taste the difference. You're damn right that's German, and that's especially for you. And the glass is chilled, just like them fancy restaurants. I dug the deepest, coldest well in the state. I'm flattered, sir. So, how soon do you think you can handle the problem? Oh, don't worry about Maria. She still doesn't speak very much English. Doctor, please sit down. Thank you, sir. Maria, wait there for a Mr. Kirk, your letter stated your fiancé has been unwell since she came to visit you. Oh, Angela isn't visiting here. She moved here from St. Louis. And we're going to be married just as soon as she's up to it. But, but I don't know, Doc. Hell, nobody knows. She's... She's cold like this marble. She's got no, no pep, no, no energy. You know what I'm talking about, Doc, the kind of sparkle I mean, the, the pep that a man is entitled to get from a woman. Well, so how soon do you reckon you can have her looking and acting like she was when I met her? I practice medicine, sir. I do not prophesy. I haven't even met the lady. Then the doctor and the lady should meet at once. Doc, this is Angela, Angela Richardson. Honey, this is your new doctor, Dr. Hedrick. Dr. Hedrick? How do you do, Miss Richardson? Oh, I do very poorly to everyone's disappointment. Please, sit down. Thank you. Honey, I told you you shouldn't be up. The sooner Dr. Hedrick learns about me, the sooner we can all return to normal. Don't you agree, Doctor? Well, I'm paying the doctor $10 a day. I'm not sure if he's going to be in a hurry or not. Cash on the barrel head, Doc. He and I have a lot to discuss, honey. And you know how you're always telling me how important rest is to females? Yes, then I shall return to my room like a good little girl. Only first, I must refill our guest's empty glass. You know, everybody I checked you out with, Doc, they all said that you were about the only doctor in these parts that had any experience with these, these new fandangled discoveries from Europe and Boston. So you know me. Al Kirk, I always buy the best. Good loss, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Kirk, you're quite right. I do feel a little weak. Well, I shall leave you two gentlemen to make any arrangements concerning my examinations. You just get a good rest, honey. Doctor, I look forward to seeing you. Auf Wiedersehen. Damn, but I want her healthy. A man's bride to be, not up to any uh, affection. I got top mares throwing, throwing top colts. I got top cows throwing top calves. I got every kind of offspring that I want except the two-legged kind. Doc, please help me.
serious, gentlemen. For better or for worse. Now, for a captain like you, you'd spot how easy this is to defend. Them gullies and walls hold off anybody. Whole regiment of engines. I don't know what that means, but it's like home to me. Yeah. Well, you go up into these hills, you're going to find the graves of some people who thought just the same way. In fact, there's one of their names right here on this claim. They just weren't strong enough to hold on to it, that's all. Well, all we got is some bare land and our bare hands. Either you gentlemen want to back out? Jamás. Never, amigo. Right there. We will build a ranch house, not a hacienda. But then, next to it, right there, we will build a Mexican chapel. All right, compañeros? All right with me. Sounds good to me, Paco. Quill, a writer. Uh, it's only one of them. That half breed of clerks. He's keeping an eye on us. Oh, we picked up that old boy coming out of town. Yeah. Well, how come somebody didn't tell me? Well, I'm telling you now. Well, how come I'm always the last one to know? <laughs> come on. Come on, Mueller. You I mean, spot something suspicious, why don't you let me know? I mean, I'm a partner, ain't I? So my partners, I spotted something. Once more, please. You may put on your blouse, ma'am. Please, tell me. You are anemic, as you suspected, and... Gracias, Maria. Más café. I wish I could speak German. You are very suspicious. What did that cryptic message mean? I have to trust you. I have to trust someone. There's no one else. Please, help me get away from here. When you go, take me with you. Are you serious? Oh, please, Dr. Henry, can't you see? I'm a prisoner here. Why not merely tell Mr. Kirk? I wish to go back to my father in St. Louis, wasn't it? Mr. Kirk has bought me from my father. My father owed one of the Kirk banks $4,000. He couldn't pay that. Mr. Kirk came to our little farm, intended to take it over, of course, and took a liking to me. He was fascinated by my English background. What did you think about it? Well, I, I, I found him not jolly. He, he was rough and crude, but he laughed a lot. He showered us with presents. And he told my father that if two men could see eye to eye, then any problem could be worked out. Mr. Kirk made it sound very normal. So it was agreed that as a wedding present, as a gesture of joining the family, Mr. Kirk would forgive the debt. And you accepted to save your father? Yes, but... But his demands have changed. Mr. Kirk will not set a date for the wedding until I am pregnant. What? He wants to set up an empire here in Texas to found a dynasty. He didn't select me because he was attracted to me, because my pedigree was satisfactory. My bloodlines meet his standards. He will use me to bear his sons. But... But Mr. Kirk is too shrewd to commit all his holdings to a wife until there is an heir. He could die. And then I, his wife, would own everything. Until I am pregnant with his child, there will be no ceremony. Is he impossible to be accepted as the father of your children, as your husband? I cringe when he touches me. I can't tell you some of the things. You must insist. You have to go home. He will ruin my father. He'll kill me.
How do you like that print? It's just beautiful. <laughs> Amigos, there is something much better to brand than an old board. You said it, Paco. Cattle. Let's do some wrestling. Ho, ho, you two go and liberate any cattle, and we're going to have ourselves some visitors. And I mean with lynch ropes and muchachos. I never take anything from anybody, except from senoritas, <laughs> who insist that I take it. Now, you remember I told you I have some old friends in Mexico? They owe me a certain obligation. I suggest that two of us, right across the Grande, to collect. Well, I don't know. You think it's safe? Well, if Kirk or anyone had wanted to make a move, they would before now. Jonathan, ain't seen no hostile nowhere. Besides, we had a stopping place here. We need lots of necessaries. See, si. one of you will ride with me, and the other one goes into town for nails, cloth, and horseshoes. Uh, medicine? Sure, a hundred proof. Look, I don't think it's such a good idea for just one of us to go into town either. You just duck in and duck out and keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> I will flip a coin. The winner comes with me, and the other one goes into the gap. Call it. Heads. The winner gets to sneak in some time at Roundhouse Dinny. You just duck in and duck out. Just duck in, duck out. Just duck in, duck in, duck in the gin. Don't know about ducking out. <laughs> Is everything all right? Was breakfast all right? Do you need anything? Not a thing, thank you, sir. Did you look in on her? The maid indicated she was still asleep. The best possible news, I think. You get on back to the bar and I'll take over from here. I just wish to hell you didn't have to go set that damn hip in Laredo. But you knew when I arrived, my time was limited. Mr. Kirk, I will do all within my power to help Miss Richardson. I only ask that you respect her feelings and give her sufficient time to improve. I just want her well, and I expect you to make her well. I never forget anybody that does me a favor. That's just like I never forget anybody that crosses me. Well, I must be on my way. Well, I'll see you at the end of the month. Oh, going through town, take a look at my new building. Think about setting up your office. So long, Doc. Have a good trip. Thank you, sir. What do you want, Maria? Que pasa? Hold it a minute, Doc. Well? El médico, señor. <laughs> it's better than forgetting it inside some patient, huh, Doc? Gracias, Maria. as soon as possible. Hey, you take care of yourself now, yeah? Just gonna duck in and duck out. I got horse sense. Mule sense, too. Get up. 
All right. You can come out. We are safe now. My God, don't drink so fast. Carefully. Oh! I'm sorry. You are mad. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I should never have endangered you. What are you going to do now? Get as far away from here as I can. When did you do it? And how? At dawn, when the Nighthawk had gone into breakfast. Everyone else was asleep. What about Maria? Oh. Well, I, I told her I was taking a sleeping potion, and that she wasn't to wake me in the morning because I was going to sleep as long as I could. Someone heard my prayers. All right, all right. Jonathan, this is the Mexico I'm proud of. You see this? Built in the 1500s. Always owned by the same family. So this is where your friends live, huh? See, uh, one of their homes. Jonathan, you have told me that your plantation was as grand as this. No, uh, isn't anything like this. Well, just who lives here? Frankly, uh, she's a very attractive widow. Muy hermosa y muy amable. Very beautiful and very friendly. Well, just how friendly is she, Paco? Just between us, uh, we have shared the same bed. Ooh, you... Oh. Well, Mike, glad to see you. Are you going to tell me who your friend is? So I can welcome him properly. Oh, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> May I present you my North American friend, El Capitan Jonathan Quell, Senora Teresa Romero, and Senorita Pilar Romero. My mother and my little sister. You are more than welcome here, my friend. Please come inside. Gracias, senora. You will have to tell me what my brother has been doing. I cannot believe a word he says. Oh, senorita, it will be a pleasure. Well, you heard what my mother said. Mi casa es su casa. going to do? I'm going to walk into town. I, I have enough money. Please, you mustn't be seen with me. But you're not strong. Oh, just, just being away from him gives me strength. Well, I, I shan't forget you. Goodbye. No, this is madness. I can't leave you alone. Listen, get back inside. I have only one stop to make in town. And then I'll take you back to Laredo. Ja, do what I say. Come, get back inside. No matter what happens, make no sound. Oh, get up!
just had me my morning eye open. Care to join me? No, thank you, sir. I'm in a hurry. Uh, please, water my horses. Anyone still hanging in down there on the San Pedro? Got my admiration. It's really surprising what a few men can do together. They all got the same determination. You sound like a cavalry officer I once knew. Come up against him and wished I hadn't. Jeb Stewart. <laughs> no Mescalero sneaking around down there? Oh, I reckon San Pedro Creek's too far out the way. Listen, you start bringing in cattle, build a herd. Nothing's out of the way for engines or whites. Oh, that's so. Well, good luck, Prize. It's always nice to have folks move into Texas. Hey, Prize. That sure looks like Kirk and his men. You better get out of here fast. Yes, sir. Hey, kids! Get out of here! Go on, go hide, quick! have to wait. Thank you very much, Mr. Alexander Kirk. planning on giving this as a present to someone? Bring them along. If she's inside, I'm gonna blow your brains out all over the ground with this. I don't know, sir. Ah! You, get up in the hills with all your drunken Indian friends and try to pick up her trail. Burn up, Ames, you cover that end of the
The brown bowl is better, no? I want my son to have the best. You sure you want to come back to that broken down place of ours? I mean, all this is going to be yours one day, boy. That's an excellent idea. Why don't you and your friend come and work this hacienda? Instead of starting with nothing. Can't you understand, Mama? A man must build his own life, just as Papa did. Jonathan, Price, and myself, we will make it on our own. I understand that, my son. A man must be a man. Why don't you take 50 cows instead of 25? Thank you, senora. I think 50 might be just a little more than we can handle right now. Come on, Paco. I will pick out the best of the hair. I'm going to send some vaqueros with you as far as the border. Pilar, your mother's quite a woman. She runs this hacienda as well as any man that I could think of. No, mother is better. She knows everything a man should know about operating this hacienda. And also everything a woman should know about managing men. Oh, you're gonna learn all that from her? Quizás. I learn very quickly. Especially when I'm interested in what the teacher has to teach me. Hey, Jonathan, we're ready to move them out. Well, Pilar, in the Deep South, we have a custom for saying goodbye to a beautiful lady. In Mexico, we have a much better way to say goodbye. Uh, well, our paths are going to cross again real soon. Adios. Adios. Don't forget your promise. Almost impossible to believe. Our little Paco wanting to build something, wanting to stay in one place. Suddenly, a man. A Jonathan Quill, Mama. He is quite an example. I like him. Well, I would never have guessed. Are you traveling far? Depends. Far enough. Could you tell me how long it takes to get to the San Pedro Creek? What's supposed to be down there? My brother. He's a missionary. He's building a school. I was supposed to meet him several months ago at Eagle Gap. There was some sort of confusion. What are you trying to get me in the middle of, ma'am? Nothing. I mean, who put you up to this? Where I come from, a man like me, together with a woman like you, that's cause for a tar and feather party and ask questions later. Oh, I, I shouldn't like that. I, I just wondered if you could tell me if the river is at the end of the canyon and which way I should turn.
You got a lot of spunk. Coming out here, San Pedro, not knowing whether you're going to meet up with a rider or not. I have no choice. Well, I don't own this here trail. Mr. Abraham Lincoln, he says an American can come and go as he pleases. So I reckon I don't have no choice either. Thank you. That's awfully kind of you. Uh, my name is Angela Richardson. Enterprise Jackson. How do you do? How do you do? Come on, follow me. You must be in a big hurry. Sure traveling light. Just a bird, ma'am. You trail weary? Want to stop for a bite? No. Let's continue. The river is just around the bend. Once we cross it, going to have to separate. You're going to get where you're going. All right, ma'am. Let's get going. Come on, you. Who come all the way? Yeah! Wait here, ma'am. Watch where I go. River's high in the last time. Now you watch careful how I do it.
remember when the horse went down. <laughs> you caught your foot in the stirrup. Can you see? Two, maybe, maybe three guns. They're after me. You? I'm running away from Alexander Kirk. Oh, no. I was supposed to marry him. I'd rather be dead. Well, ma'am, it looks like that's what they got in mind for both of us. They got us caught in a crossfire. We don't stand a chance in hell. Unless maybe we can run a bluff. What are you doing? Oh! I hope you have to play dead. I see. Now you tie this around my arm real tight. Tighter. Now, whatever you do, don't move. I understand. You've killed her! You've killed her! You've killed her! You see, you've killed her! Look at that blood. You've killed her! Well, we did what Kirk sent us out here to do. Yeah. He's got a couple of partners. If they hurt those shots, they're gonna have us on their sights pretty damn quick. Come on. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Look at this, look at this. That black bastard robbing the dead. Black bastard. Let's go. Scout around. Make sure they're gone. Don't move a muscle. Yeah, yeah. Keep moving it. What does he mean he's sorry? You told me she was dead. Mr. Kirk, uh, I was sure of uh, all that blood and... Uh... You just get fresh horses and bring our boys in from the ranch. Yes, sir. She's too good trabajo. Toma. Partners, Mr. Jackson. Yeah, I sure am. Should have been back by now. You got some sleep. Yes, thanks to you. Well, let's get some nourishment into you. Oh. Easy. Easy now. 
I really do feel much better. Better? All put together, you ain't, you ain't more than a pound of shadow. <laughs> Down south, we call this the Jackson Special. Sorry I involved you. Please forgive me for telling you that story. Well, from all you told me, I can understand why. I don't know how to thank you. Well, you just finish up that uh, special. We'll call it even. If I'm going to stay here, I could earn my keep by cooking for you. You didn't like the special? Let's try this on for size. What is it? Well, out here we call it a western crutch. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> Feels like a new leg. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jack. It is itchy, ma'am. I feel a lot better when my partners show up. They do back this evening. Be a sight for so eyes. Well, we're on the home stretch, Paco. I can almost smell the supper Price is cooking up. I reckon Price is stirring up one of his Jackson specials to welcome us home. Well, you can't be sure. You take four men, go up along this wall. Okay. Ames, you and Soldado, take two men, circle around, try to get behind them. I do, I do. Come with me. Look, now I gotta go now. I can't do no good in here. But I'll be back, yeah? I won't be far away. <laughs>
take you. Too bad you can't see the hot lead that's coming your way.
Y llove. here, Sheriff. Mr. Kirk asked me to look in on you. Oh, he's still alive. He was particularly interested about Miss Richardson. You can tell Mr. Kirk that I'm still here, too. He wants me to take you back. No, we're going to take Miss Richardson wherever she decides and when. Well, I got to admit, you all got a lot of guts. Well, we took this land knowing it wasn't going to be easy, Sheriff. <laughs> 